Hey Prince Magnum, when are you going to do something interesting with Project Lena? A DIY that anybody can do. Stick around, that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> Again, and welcome to the Prince Magnum channel where hot riding and romance do coexist. I'm your host, Prince Magnum. Welcome once again to do it yourself budget hot riding. And in this episode, the focus is now on Project Lena. Now, I know some of you out there have been hoping for Project Spirit, but we'll get to her soon enough. This video is going to be all about Project Lena. Now, Project Lena has been with us now for over two years, and in that time frame, She's been an amazing car, but now it's time that we need to focus on doing a little bit of TLC to her. There's a lot showing, you know, a lot going wrong with her, and on top of that, she's starting to throw codes. Now, if you don't know what codes are, that's basically where the uh, onboard ECU is beginning to notice that there's issues uh, with the running of the vehicle. So, in this particular case, the codes that she's throwing is showing that she's due for a tune-up. But before we can get to the tune-up, we need to begin with what we got available to us. Now, if, you, if uh, we can take a look at these fine parts right here, this is all it's going to take to begin this process. Some carburetor cleaner, some emery cloth, and a brand new air filter. And all you're really going to need for this job is a screwdriver, okay? More on that in a moment. Now, uh, why are we doing this? Simply put, um, if you take a look right over here, you got your air filter box now this is uh, if you will um, we have here uh, the ram air induction which that's all it is it just literally scoops air in from these scoops brings it in and forces it here but you also still have this tube right over here forcing it in the normal way that everyone's used to and that's how this setup works well that filter in there's gotten dirty along with that you're going to have uh, kind of a carbon buildup kind of a sludge carbony base buildup in here. Now that's going to cause issues too. It's going to cause the engine to run a little funny. So that's where the emery cloth and uh, the carburetor cleaner comes into play. So we're actually going to disconnect the uh, this uh, air intake hose here and we're going to disconnect this tube right here to kind of move everything out of the way. We're not going to yank and do all that other, but that's all we're going to do is just disconnect these particular parts right here and we're going to get in here clean this out real good. Uh, Normally in the old days with a carbureted engine you would do you could uh, Do this right through the carburetor and spray everything down while the vehicles running But we can't do that in this case because there's a lot of tubing and everything the way that this is set up This engine will not run without this tube and all the uh, Sensors and everything connected into place. So we now know that um, So what we're going to do is just basically kind of start right in here and then work our way out and clean everything up real good Okay, now we've got the tube removed. Now, I did forget in the first part of this that we uh, you know, might also want to grab uh, maybe a roll of paper towels, some shop towels, or, uh, or just some, uh, some towels that you don't care about, uh, and stuff a few right here into the mass flow air sensor. Now, the reason why that we have done that is because you're not supposed to get anything other than the cleaner for the mass flow air sensor on the mass flow air sensor. Um, as a matter of fact, there was a guy who actually came on to uh, one of my very old, old videos back when we had Project Beauty. The one video that's over 80,000 views and started trying to talk about how you could use brake cleaner on that. No, 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 no. You don't do that because it'll mess the sensor up. So there we have that. So the first thing that we're gonna do, and you're gonna notice right away because I even left the roll out here. Uh, one of the things that you're gonna, uh, the reason why you're gonna need more paper towels or more shop towels or uh, another rag is you'll see in just a moment when I hit this, 
all the nastiness that will come out. And you'd be surprised at just how dirty that gets. Now from here I'm also going to spray down the outside of the throttle body just a little bit and you'll understand in a moment. Now this stuff evaporates so you don't have to worry about it messing with the electronics like, uh, like some cleaners will. Don't use degreaser or anything like that. Uh, use carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner to clean uh, engines like this. You cannot clean them with soap and water like you can with the old ones. So we're going to spray that out a little bit more. And right away, one of the things that will be very noticeable is the fact that uh, on the, you'll see where some of it is just hanging on, some of that nastiness. Now, that's perfectly okay. You could, we could legitimately stop right here, open up the butterfly, and even spray like that. And again, I don't need to worry about it hurting the engine any, but you could still see a lot of that nastiness coming out. Motor oil, because of, of how they set up these air intakes and everything, and that's it. This will be just fine. We could actually legitimately stop right here. But this is the Prince Magnum channel, and making minor improvements to your project at an affordable price is our claim to fame on do-it-yourself budget hot rodding. So from here, for those that did not know, this is a very, very fine sandpaper. I refer to it as an emery cloth, uh, wet to dry. So I have 500, I have a 1,000, and I have a, you know, a 1,200 uh, piece, pieces of uh, really fine sandpaper or emery cloth, as I refer to it. And you're going to understand why in a moment, why I have this here. What I'm going to do is fold this up like such. We're going to start with the 500, obviously. And for those that are not in the know, when it comes to sandpaper, the higher up the number goes, the finer it gets. It's one of those things that it would make sense if it went the other way, but it doesn't. So we're going to open this up. I'm going to lightly, lightly start cleaning around the inside and around the edges. We don't need to go super far, but just clean that up real good. And we're not looking to remove material, we're looking to just clean it off. A nice smooth, so that air just flows. Okay. Again, it's not necessarily necessary, but believe me when I say you'll notice an improvement. And again, we have the mass flow air sensor blocked off. And close that butterfly. And lightly go over the outside of it. Now, the better way to do this is obviously would have been to, uh, to go ahead and And you'll actually begin seeing a difference right there. And grab my paper towel. And right away. Very simple project. There we go. Now, we'll move to the next step. Go with the 1000. Again. Just fold it up. And you can get this at just pretty much, you can get it at your local Walmart. You can get this, this type of sandpaper. You can get, we actually got this from Harbor Freight. Okay, again, just as before, we're not looking to remove material. We're just looking to kind of polish it up. To allow that air to just slip through as cleanly as possible. <coughs> there we go. 
go. Back to our carburetor cleaner. And you can actually just see how this little bit, how it's just cleaning it up so nicely. Now, if you're using paper towels or shop towels, do yourself a favor. Be very, very careful. And don't lose any of this down in here, or otherwise you are going to have so much fun getting it out. There. You can actually begin seeing all the stuff that we have loosened up that we just couldn't get before. But we got one more step here. I'm going to get a new towel. And now, we're up to a 1200. Again, very simple, easy to do. Anybody can do this. Okay. Hold it up real good. Right back at it. there we go now that again this part of it is not necessarily necessary but believe me when I say it will help Lena run a lot better back open with the butterfly spray it out really good and just as before look at all that nastiness that we're getting isn't that something? Again, wipe it out really good. Doesn't that look amazing? And usually uh, you'll hear me always say looks don't make them run, but this is one time that looks will make this run better. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and put this back together. Don't forget to remove these. And once this goes back together, uh, it's ridiculously easy. Uh, I don't think there's really too much to show from here other than just put the tube back into place and anything you disconnected before. Just hook it back up. It'll be totally fine. There's uh, and uh, and then the next step, we're going to go ahead and show you how to do the air filter, and then uh, we'll give it a few minutes and we'll fire her up, and you can all hear her run. All right. Now we're at the stage. I've already literally just loosened up the screws. Literally, in most cases, it's just the screwdriver. And that's it. There's your air filter. And as you can tell, it's getting pretty filthy. Okay? That'll cause you to trip codes and everything else. And a lot of people don't take the time out. This is about a $10 to $20 cheap fix, depending on where you live, depends on how much money you're going to spend. And literally, you could see an improvement in gas mileage just by keeping this clean. Now, with your classic cars, typically uh, the air cleaner is on the top of the engine. But, it, but with modern cars, they've got the tubing and it goes down to the fender. On a classic, this is ideal because you only have to change your air filter every six months when you do your tune-up. 
With cars like this, I, I know the manufacturers say change it every six months, just like you did with the classics, but that is not true. And I'm going to show you why. It's this tube right here that runs down into the fender, catches everything on the road. So your car becomes a giant vacuum cleaner. So I've even seen where times where you open this up and it looks like a giant rat's nest inside there. It looks like a, a rat's been living in there. And this is one of the things that I wish that the car manufacturers would fix, but they haven't yet. They continue to use a system like this, when in reality it would be better if it was just a tube running up here like this. But that's not how they do it. They hook it up down here to try to save space, and in reality, it's causing you to lose gas mileage in the long run. So, if you have a setup where it's coming in from the tube here, like, he like here, because this one has two in this case, if you have a setup like this, your best bet is to change it every three months, or if you're driving an awful lot in town or on gravel roads, change it, every, uh, change it often. More than that if you have to. Because it, to me, you know, 10 to $20 is a whole lot cheaper than sucking dirt and nasty stuff down into your engine and shortening the lifespan. So now that we've covered that, I want to thank our friends at our local AutoZone for hooking us up with a, uh, with a brand new air filter. This is it. Brand new. We bought this a little while back. Reinstall the brand new one, just like you did the old one. Now, on Project Lena, it's just a couple of tabs you got to line up, which is going to be difficult about. And there you go. Replace your screws. Do not cross thread. And this is literally all it is. This is as hard as it gets for changing an air filter even today. On the classics, it's even easier because it's right on top and it's literally a wing nut. On the carburetor, you remove that wing nut, you take the lid off, air filter's right there, which you've all seen me do on Project Spirit numerous times. Now, depending on the make of the model, you might need a flathead or you may need a Phillips, but that's it. We have now cleaned the throttle body and put a brand new air filter in. Now this is not going to take care of all the issues with Project Lena, but it's going to take care of quite a few of them. With cleaner, fresher air running through as freely as possible, we'll see an improvement in gas mileage, we'll see an improvement in performance. And quite literally this entire, this entire thing has cost us, at best, depending again where you live, anywhere from $20 to maybe $40. And we did it ourselves, where if we did this in a shop, it would cost twice that much. So, now you too know how to do this. Now I know some of you are sitting there going, okay Prince Magnum, you've gone this far, well, let's hear a run. Well, as soon as I finish my smoke, that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, I finished my smoke. Now we're ready to start to uh, start up Project Lena. Now I already suspect that uh, when I start her, she's going to throw me a little bit of a fit. Uh, that mainly is simply put because she still needs the rest of the tune-up to go with her. And we did just spray in a bunch of carburetor cleaner, and you know that takes a moment to run through. Anybody who's ever cleaned an actual carburetor with it on the engine, the engine will bog down a little bit and then some nasty stuff will come out. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. So we already suspect that. That being said, we're still going to see an improvement once she does start, we'll see that she runs a little bit smoother. <laughs>
And just like that, we have made some few uh, simple tune-up changes to Project Lena. You can already hear it in the idle how much smoother she has been. Well, and for those who do not know, she has run really lousy lately. So right now, she's idling very nicely. She's running very smooth. Very much better than what she was, say, a couple hours ago. So, now you two know how to clean the throttle body with it still attached to the car and change the air filter, and you didn't spend a hell of a whole lot of money doing it. Again, prices will vary from location to location, but that's to be expected. Where I live, we spent around $30. That's pretty doggone cheap. Now, if you already have the stuff on hand, like we always keep carburetor cleaner, and I like to keep several different uh, grits of sandpaper, that is, so we already had that, and it, so to me, that's just shop stuff, you know. So, I mean, this is a major improvement to Project Lena, and it didn't cost us that much. And we were only really out just the time it took us to do it. Which, total time, if you're not talking to a camera, maybe only 10-15 minutes. Sounds like a nice cheap investment. My God, I can't believe how well she runs. Let's hear that again. Boy, that is smooth. I couldn't be happier. So, if you like this sort of video, be sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. And while you're at it, if you're hitting that subscribe button for the very first time, let me say, be sure to hit that bell icon because unfortunately, the subscribe button doesn't mean as much as it used to on YouTube as it once did. So be sure to hit that if you're hitting the subscribe button for me. Also, be sure to check out these fine following folks right here. These are hard working cogs within the Maverick Nation. These folks here continue to ask me to put out content just like you're seeing right now. And some of these people in the video game streaming community, and to them, this is content that goes beyond just video games, showing that people who enjoy video games can have other hobbies besides video games. And working on cars is one of mine. Also, be sure to check out my partner, Mr. Sketch Scars himself, Jammin' John of Sketch Squad TV. He's the, uh, the pioneer of 4G LTE, mobile live streaming, the fresh parents of Cell Air. He's got a million titles to go with all of that. He's just a guy from another planet. And what I do with cars, he does with computers. All right, that brings us to the usual spot. As always, get out there and work on a project. I don't care what it is, just do something with yourself. Remember, idle hands and a creative mind go together like oil and water. If you have a sweetheart, sweep them off their feet and do something special for them today. And for all of you out there, no matter what's going on in your life, if no one out there has told you that they love you today, Prince Magnum does. God bless you, and have a happy 24. Thank you.